All right, welcome to the Monday, April 1st, 2019 weekly weather briefing. Uh, for this week, we're going to be looking at a quiet start to the week and then getting into an unsettled spring weather pattern. We'll be looking at several rounds of precipitation um, arriving starting about Wednesday uh, with a heavier one coming on Friday into Saturday and then showers continuing into the weekend. These systems will also bring potential for some breezy winds. We'll be looking at our hydrology uh, concerns and then some uh, announcements for spotter training coming up. So looking at the week here in our matrix with our cities on the left there, um, the first few systems going through Thursday are going to have fairly minimal impacts. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have the showers arriving, first one on, on Wednesday. That may also bring a small chance for thunderstorms across southeast Washington, uh, but confidence is fairly low. Uh, showers will start to arrive again on Thursday, uh, but the main thing is going to be some steady, moderate to potentially heavy rains on Friday going into Saturday morning, and we may start to see some impacts from that. Um, right now I've just highlighted the uh, North Idaho panhandle um, for this matrix uh, because we still have some pretty decent snow in some of the lower elevations up there. We saw amounts from east to Spirit Lake today reported about one foot of snow still on the ground. Uh, the other areas have uh, pretty much lost much of their snow in the basin and down towards Pullman. So impacts should be less, but that's something we'll definitely need to keep an eye on as the week progresses. And then as we uh, go more into central Washington, uh, that steadier rain for Friday will come in earlier, and so we may have impacts starting as early as Friday night there. Uh, my main concern over that way is going to be for some uh, potential little rock slides in that steeper terrain. And then um, that may continue into the weekend, but precipitation amounts in that area will be much lower for the weekend systems coming through as they come through with more of a westerly component and there is some shadowing in the lee of the Cascades. But all in all, we will have some breezy winds starting Tuesday, uh, another one potentially on Wednesday, at least for the basin, and then over the weekend uh, as several waves come through as well. So for the Tuesday system, um, this isn't really a system, it's more of a system approaching the coast. Uh, that's going to draw north to northeast winds across our area. The strongest winds will come down the Okanagan Valley as well as North Idaho from Sandpoint to Rathdrum and then come and go across the Columbia Basin. Right now we're looking for gusts upwards about 25 miles an hour. Could have some locally stronger gusts around Sandpoint and OMAC. Our precipitation amounts for our first system arriving Tuesday night and departing on Wednesday look like this, so not real heavy, that's why there's lower concerns, generally under a quarter inch for most locations and very little in the uh, southwest basin. Uh, for Wednesday afternoon and evening, once that system goes through, a cold front will bring potential for some gusty winds as well, but these will be more common out of the west and southwest. Uh, there we'll have the potential for some gusts upwards of about 30, maybe 35 miles an hour across the open Columbia Basin for that one, as well as maybe in the Cascade Gaps, Waterville Plateau, Palouse, and West Plains. Uh, but here's the main concern for the week. Uh, starting around Thursday night into Friday and then continuing into Saturday morning, probably departing around Saturday morning, uh, is going to be a fairly... Uh, strong system with a healthy moisture source and that's going to bring potential for uh, roughly about a half to three quarters of an inch of rain for many locations. You can see all but maybe the lower Columbia Basin um, will have that potential. Some of these numbers may be a little bit higher, some may be a little bit lower as we fine-tune this forecast, but um, this is going to be the first true test of uh, appreciable moisture and our spring uh, melt. So. Um, Stay tuned for this and be prepared. Uh, looking at our snowpack, how it's evolved over the last week. Again, we haven't couldn't have asked for better uh, conditions to continue to melt off the snow, especially in the lower elevations. We're st we continue to lose much of the uh, the low elevation snow, but places uh, outside Sandpoint, Coeur d'Alene, up towards Priest Lake, there's still some pretty decent snow in the lower elevations that will contribute to melt. Uh, come these windier and rainier systems late this week. 
Uh, here's a look at our snowpack. Things haven't changed much. Uh, maybe a tick down from uh, what we saw uh, a week ago. And so, yeah, the main problems we're looking at are going to be continuation. If you have field flooding in your areas, that may continue to worsen um, with the upcoming pattern. And uh, with a fairly low predictability of where these may occur, it's just a common occurrence in the spring, uh, given the steep terrain and the freeze-thaw cycles. And now we're going to add some precipitation to saturate these grounds. And so there will be potential for some rock slides here and there um, across some of these uh, northern mountain valleys. And the outlook for the 8 to 14 days is April 8th through the 14th. Um, looks like very low signal for temperatures, but uh, favors near to above normal average precipitation uh, through that period. So if we do get any problems ongoing, um, you know, they may continue uh, into this week as more rounds of precipitation move through. Uh, if you are in the area of Lewiston or Spokane and would love to attend one of our spotter training courses, uh, we have one coming up April 17th, uh, followed by another one on May 2nd. And here is the summary for the week. Uh, everyone, have a great week. We'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.